If we look back, right, and I've trained over 100 labs and, and done 30 or 40 of these clinical lectures in the past year, um, so that's not a lot. I mean, it sounds maybe like a lot. Sometimes I feel it's a lot, but it, most labs, right? There, there are maybe 6,000 labs in the country um, and, and you know, maybe a few hundred are doing dentures. So most labs are, are not doing digital dentures. They're doing it this way, right? This is what you know, most of you learned in dental school and what most labs are still doing, traditional analog workflows. And when you watch these videos, you think Man, could with digital and CAD CAM and computers, you know, why is this still going on? Well, it's a slow integration process. Uh, I, there's no such thing as just turning on a switch and converting everything over to digital. But we've gotten good at this. But, you know, again, you watch this and you think ball out and, and curing units and plaster and wax and, and mixing up a dough of acrylic. You know, you wonder, wow, can we not get better? And, and we have gotten better. Now, again, labs are pretty good at this and uh, they do it this like this every day. And it's just there's got to be some ways to improve this. So just know that digital is relatively new and uh, the leading labs are all over it. But, you know, this is still pretty much the way most dentures are, are made. But I want you to watch this next video and see the workflow of how uh, Row and, and some labs are going digital, right? They, they are digitizing records. You send them a bite or impression of the model, they scan it. So now they have a digital version of your model, your bite. They have a digital library of all the denture teeth. They have digital waxing tools, right? So they create the denture on the screen, right? So accuracy, consistency, speed, the output of that design denture then goes to a sophisticated output device or a CAM device, we call it. In this case, the carbon printer, right? And then we have materials that have developed to the point where we can pour these materials in this carbon printer and we can get that resulting denture back and around two hours. We're utilizing quality denture teeth and we are assembling teeth, right? But that science has been figured out. I'll explain a little bit of that later, but a little bit of cure time and the dentures are done. The last thing is to be done is finish and polish, which also is about a third or a fourth of the time because most of the shaping, the anatomy, the contouring is done on the computer screen. So there's not much left to do after they're processed except to polish. Again, speeds up the process, makes it more accurate, more consistent, makes it easy for uh, folks like BJ and me to scale up and, and train new people because the tasks are easy to teach. So however we get the records, the software is turned on, the lab creates a denture, and when that denture is created, it's sent to an output device. Right. And the way we started in the lab space for for digital dentures is milling. Right. We would buy a puck of already processed acrylic, traditional acrylic. We would mill out our denture based design. We would bond in traditional denture teeth and boom, we'd have a digital denture. And the fit was great because five axis milling. We know the accuracy there and it's fine and it's still used today. The problem with milling. Uh, even though it results in a great fit, uh, you know, there's no more shrinkage, there's no more monomer. So it's, it's a good denture, uh, one of the best. The productivity of that process is slow, right? It takes anywhere from two and a half to four hours, depending on the milling machine, to mill out a single arch. And, and if you've got more than, you know, two to four or five dentures a day, it's not a very productive process. So that makes it more expensive. Not only that, but reductive technology, right? We're taking something and milling it down to something else. There's some waste there. So there's a cost associated with that. So typically mill dentures are going to cost the lab more to make, going to take longer to make. And it, and so it becomes a, a product or a, a protocol for maybe smaller labs that are only doing, you know, a few dentures a day. Somebody's not in a hurry. And of course, the added cost. We all know and, and knew then that printing was going to be the way we were headed, right? Printing technology in any manufacturing uh, circumstance is a better way, right? We're taking something and building it into something else, but everything that's left over, we can use again. So it's almost 100% usage out of a bottle of material we pour in 3D printers. So our first generation of materials are the ones I mentioned earlier. Maybe you try to print a denture and you saw the aesthetics wasn't as good. Uh, you might've dropped it and it broke. 
Uh, these materials, they gave us our really first step into 3D printing, and it's still a great alternative for maybe intermediate or temporary transitional appliances, but it didn't pass the muster on our typical test of is it as good or better than what we've been doing with traditional processes, and it's not. It's not as strong as traditionally processed acrylic and not as aesthetic, but we did have the great fit. We had the speed. We had the efficiency. We had the accuracy, and so that was a good first step, and this was about maybe six to eight years ago. We are now in what we call generation two resins that we can pour in these printers. And the loose stone digital print is the one from Dent Supply. It's the first one. There's others coming, but this one is kind of hard to beat at this point because of the advantages, right? It's printed in the most accurate 3D printer on the market. It's printed very quickly. Um, that printer creates a part that has very few issues as far as the way SLA or stereolithography type printing is done. Uh, super strong. Uh, they use a method that they, they, they give an acronym called um, CLIP, Continuous Liquid Interface Processing. And what that means is it's just a 3D printer that uh, the platform continuously moves because the oxygen barrier underneath is permeable. And that allows a faster, more stronger part, whatever resin you're pouring in there. So when you see on my slide that it's two times conventional, right, it literally is twice as strong as a traditional denture base. And, and that should really, you know, make our eyebrows go up and get real excited about maybe upper dentures that are broken in midlines, you know, lower dentures over the locators. When you have something twice as strong, you should see much fewer breakage. And we are. Denture teeth, we're using uh, the same type of denture teeth in the top level of this denture, right? There are other ways to do this, right? We don't have to use a carded denture tooth, but to get the best quality, we want to use a tooth we know about. And somebody asked me the other day, well, if it's 3D denture, why aren't you printing the teeth as well? Well, the biggest reason is that nobody has yet invented the bottle of material that we can pour into a printer that results in a tooth that's as good as a carded tooth. All right, the manufacturing of carded denture teeth, that science and technology has been figured out a long time ago. And we know what we get when we buy a carded tooth. With a printed tooth, they're still working on it. It's coming. I'm sure it'll be there um, in, in, in a few short years. But right now, we just don't have that option to match quality and durability that we do with carded. So that's kind of the top level. Doesn't mean we can't print a tooth. Doesn't mean we can't mill a tooth. But uh, they would be you know, slightly less uh, resistant to, to wear. They're going to wear out a little quicker. So. Same Lucitone shades, easy for the lab to use, right? And literally, you know, bases are printed in two hours. The carbon does a super job of this. And the Lucitone digital print that you see here was developed to work with the carbon to maximize that technology and make it as strong as, you know, that we need it to be. And, and of course, aesthetic as well. So people ask me how strong. Well, Boston University did our studies on Lucitone digital print. And uh, when we measure dent denture fracture, we, we measure it by fracture resistance or fracture toughness, some people call it. And the number of measurement we use is called joules per meter squared. Right? Somebody asked me the other day, why don't we talk about flexural strength? Well, flexural strength, uh, when, when you're measuring something, is a measure of, say, a rod of something that we put in the instrument and push down until it breaks in the middle, really relates to bridges and crowns. Uh, but not so much with dentures. With dentures, we want to know how much can I pull it or push it until it breaks. And that's fra uh, fracture resistance or, or, or flexural uh, toughness. So watch this next video. So this is the Lucitone Digital Print Denture in an Instron machine. And it, a typical denture would have already broken. Acrylic denture would have broken right now. And this one, we get pretty close uh, to heels touching before it finally shatters. Um, this material, uh, in comparison, is twice as strong as traditional acrylic, right? Traditional acrylic that we've been using forever has a joules per meter squared number of about 12 to 1500. This material uh, in the mouth is at 3000 joules per meter squared. So, you know, universities do all our good studies, but lab guys want to have fun. So we take the dentures out in the parking lot and run over them with our cars and trucks to see what happens. A denture would never, a traditional process denture would never make it through this test at all. And uh, not saying it anything is, you know, we can break anything if we work hard at it, but I've seen very few break, very, very few break. Plus, and I'll mention this because I know this is a pain point in a dental practice, um, 
I've not seen a single tooth pop out, not once. Of all the times we've ran over them, dropped them out of three-story buildings, throw it up against the wall, drop them in sinks, whatever we do, I have not seen a single tooth pop out. I've actually put these dentures in my bench vise and taken pliers and try to get teeth out and end up breaking or chipping teeth. So the science of how we are bonding teeth to base has been figured out and you, you shouldn't see any of your patients come back with one of these dentures and, and a tooth pop out. So that's exciting. But that's the material. That's what they're using at Row, and it gives us a wonderful platform. Loose on digital print being twice as strong as aesthetic, it gives us a digital denture that truly is as good or better than what we've been doing. 